Yes, yes, I'm freezing my plums off in Melbourne, but I found a $4,000 MacBook Pro heater. Woo! So if you want to upgrade from Windows Home to Windows Pro, or just get insanely cheap Windows and Office 2016 keys, head on down to 0 and 9, links are in the description, and I even have a discount code for you, and they also have cheap gaming keys too. Okay, jokes aside, you may be surprised with this video, trust me, because unless you've had your head buried, you'll see that people are going absolutely bonkers because the MacBook Pro throttles, oh. So let me tell you something. I made a video last year on this exact subject with the 2017 MacBook Pro. I'll leave a link to the video, and in that video I said, this is the hottest hardware like I meant literally, and I made jokes, it's my new heater, etc. So I'm guessing if you were a subscriber of mine, you would already know that this MacBook Pro is going to overheat. The last model did, the 2016 model did, this is no surprise. And if you are new around here, please subscribe because I have a lot of great stuff on the way. This sort of thing you would have already known, even though for some reason it's blown up now. But anyway, this is nothing new. I knew before I got this MacBook Pro it was going to throttle. Now I got the i7 because I knew the i9 would be an absolute complete waste of money. And in that video last year, I told you, do not upgrade the Mac CPUs ever. Even with the 13 inch, do not upgrade from the i5 to the i7. It's a waste of time. There are some specific reasons you would use an upgraded CPU if you used a lot of single threaded applications, if you use maybe with the i9 situation, if you use some sort of scientific application that uses cache a lot or something like that because the i9 has more cache, maybe then you can justify the i9. If you're using single threaded music, something like that that doesn't use multi-core, you can probably justify it. But other than that, do not upgrade to any i9. Just get the base CPU on all MacBook Pros. 13 or 15 inch. You're wasting your money otherwise. So at the moment you're looking at a render of the sample project I use for all my laptops. Just look at the graph. You'll see the temperature and the frequency. I'm just going to talk why that's going on so you can exactly see how it throttles up and down, up and down. I also want to address some misinformation that people are putting out there like saying, well this isn't unique to Mac that these throttle and that or it happens with the PCs. No, it doesn't. There's no eighth generation CPU that throttles in any PC. And people were citing the XPS 15. Well, these throttles. No, it doesn't. It doesn't throttle. If you peg that CPU 100%, you're going to be still boosting with the XPS 15 with the i9. It's going to be running at around 3.1 to 3.3 all core boost it's going to be above its base clock speed of 2.9 and it will do that indefinitely and it doesn't really get into the 90s doing that this is completely different with these Macs they will throttle when you just peg the CPU and it will go below its base clock that's a big difference now with the XPS 15 9570 once you add the temperature of the GPU as well so the 1050 Ti then it will throttle so if you're gaming etc that's completely different to just throttling when you're maxing the CPU at 100% which the XPS doesn't do, the MacBook Pro does. It even goes down to 800 megahertz. Yes, I said 800 megahertz, 0.8 of a gigahertz. It really gets down that low. And this is the i7. The i9 is just going to be worse. That being said, you're going to be really surprised. I'm going to say something here you're probably not going to expect. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. This MacBook Pro is much faster than the last model, like night and day faster. So if I just put up some render times here, so have a look at that. The MacBook Pro, it's down there, third from the bottom. And as you can see, look in the brackets there, hardware encoding. So when you hardware encode, you use QuickSync and you don't use the CPU so much. Have a look at that speed. Eight minutes and 30 seconds for this sample project. That puts it pretty much as fast as all the other laptops. Now, that does have hardware encoding enabled. If you enable hardware encoding on the XPS 15, it'll be six minutes and 19 seconds. So a bit over two minutes less. But even without hardware encoding enabled, it's 14 minutes and 15 seconds. Now have a look under it. The 2017 MacBook Pro, that's with the quad core, 25 minutes. It's shaved off 10 minutes. And that's just the extra two cores, plus the new one supports 32 gig. Now I know this project, when it renders, it uses during rendering up to 23 gigabytes of RAM. So the 32 gigabytes helped here because it doesn't make sense that it shaved off 10 minutes from last year's model when you're only adding two cores here. 
But then when you add the fact that it has 32 gigs now, now that it's not right into disk and memory managing, it can actually render this at full speed now. That's where you get the extra boost in performance. You're getting 10 minutes off where really it shouldn't be nowhere near 10 minutes off. But because the 2017 model only had 16 gig, made it a lot slower. So for me personally, the reason I did not consider a MacBook Pro last generation or last year is because it was so slow. You're comparing 25 minutes rendering to the XPS 15, which at the time with the quad core was what, 13 minutes. There was a massive difference there. It was nearly half the time at 14 minutes versus nine minutes on the XPS 15. There is still a big difference there, like five minutes, but I could accept five minutes. But last year when it was nearly as twice as slow and it was over 10 minutes difference, it was like 12 minutes difference or something, that was not acceptable. So this is basically doubled its speed from last year. And when you have that hardware encoding enabled, it's only like two minutes difference compared to any of the other PCs, two minutes difference now. So now forget about the throttling and all this stuff. At the end of the day, this is the real world. This is what I'm doing. It performs in the timeline good now too. I can actually play back 4K footage at full. I never used to be able to do that last year. I can do it now. So now I can edit in the timeline pretty much as good as all the PCs. I can render out within two minutes now, just a bit over two minutes. It makes this Mac now worth considering for me. Now, I still think there's better laptops out there. I would still prefer the XPS 15. And I always recommended the XPS 15 as I always thought it was the best 15 inch premium laptop. Now it's a bit harder now to recommend it as like a easy slam dunk no brainer because it really is gonna depend on your workflow. There are so many other good laptops like the Aero, the Razer. You really could make an argument for either or all. But last year, I would never even consider the Mac. But this year, I can. So I think it's a good upgrade. And I can tell you now, this is no surprise to Apple. This is the compromise Apple made. They know that this overheats. That's the choice they made. This is no news to them. This is no surprise to them. It's no surprise to me that it's doing this from last year. Why wouldn't it not do it this year? So I'm just going to show you some gaming, the heat while gaming. In actual fact, it didn't throttle while gaming. I will do a video editing and a gaming review of this laptop. So make sure you subscribe to see that. But with all this hysteria and this sort of storm in the teacup, at the end of the day, when I use this laptop, it's nearly as fast as the Windows ones using Premiere. If I use Final Cut, it'll probably be equal to the PCs. But even using Premiere, which usually the Mac really runs poorly on, it's very competitive with the PCs. And of course, there will be scenarios where you're pegging the CPU 100% where you're not gonna get the maximum out of this. 100%, I understand that. So you've got to work out your workflow. You know, something like uh, Cinema 4D or Blender that may use the CPU and GPU at the same time. Maybe a DaVinci does. You've got to work that out. If it does peg the CPU and uses the GPU, yeah, you're probably gonna get ground to a halt. But for me, I can say here in Premiere Pro, Final Cut, uh, any of the audio stuff I do, I can even game on it. I'll show the gaming review later. I can now make the argument where I could say I could consider this. I'm not saying I would consider it and buy it, but last model, I would not even consider it. The RAM limitation and just how poor the performance was compared to this year is like night and day. So stay tuned for more on this. And until next time, guys, tally ho. So we've seen the behavior of the CPU throttling when we're rendering. So that has a little bit of GPU heat. So I just want to see, can I replicate this with just the CPU being used, not the GPU as well. So let's see, let's start the stress test. And here, over here is the power, ooh, 83 watts. Woo, look at that. 80 watts it's using, and here it says it can use up to 100 watts. Whereas usually the PCs, they max out at about 75. So Apple, let them use whatever they want. You want to use 100 watts, you can. You only can use it for a couple of seconds anyway. But as you can see, it's already throttling. Now, ignore that because the fans haven't even come on yet. Let's see, once the fans kick in, what sort of... Oh, as we can see here. Yeah, okay, so the fans are on now. And as I thought, it's exactly the same behavior. So what happens is, gets up to 100 degrees, backs off, gets up to 100 degrees, backs off, gets up to 100 degrees, backs off. That's the behavior. If you have a look at this clock, I'll zoom in a little bit here. Look at that, hot, hot, too hot. 
that's what it's saying. So if we have a look here, look at its frequency. So you've got the frequency here and you've got the temperature here. Just hit 100 degrees then. Whoa. And the fans have kicked in. Look at that. 800 megahertz that was going then. 0.80 there. 0.80. That's like Pentium um, 3 days, I think. Unbelievable how much it throttles. Now this is CPU only now. No GPU temperature being put into this. And I think the problem here is, I think they're just getting too ambitious with the boost. They're trying to boost it up too, too high. They shouldn't let it go that high. They, look, it's trying to do four gigahertz. As soon as it hits that, boom, it has to cool down. It hits 100, it has to cool down straight away. And it's just like schizophrenic, going up and down, up to 100, uh, cool down, up to 100, cool down, up to 100. And that's why the frequency is going up and down. I'm surely they can make it just go consistently at, you know, I don't know. 2.9 or maybe it's base speed or something i don't know but this is like the same exact behavior that it is in mac os x when you're trying to render a video it's the same behavior so we know now cpu only 100 percent it's going to throttle and this isn't the i9 the i9 is going to throttle even worse than this so i do not recommend you upgrade the cpu so i guess the moral of the story here is cpu only just pegging the cpu it behaves exactly the same as it does in Premiere Pro, which utilizes a little bit of the GPU as well. So it's not the fact that it's using the GPU that makes it throttle. If you try and peg this, all cores, it's gonna throttle no matter what, and it cannot sustain its base clock speed. All right, tell you how there, chaps. Now let's see what it's like gaming, the temperatures in particular. Not worried about the frames per second. This is on the medium preset, 1680 by 1050 because of the aspect ratio. You cannot select 1920 by 1080 on this game. Some games you can, but then it's windowed or stretched. This is the native resolution, or what I mean, the native aspect ratio at least. And um, yeah, 1680 by 1050. So it's not running at 1080, so you know, Take that into consideration when you're looking at the frames per second. Uh, at 1080p, it would be slower. So anyway, we're interested in the temps. And if you don't know, this is the GPU, GPU frequency. This is the GPU temperature, CPU temperature, and CPU frequency, frames per second, etc. So just keep that in mind and keep an eye on it. Now, as we can see here, we're in the whole oh, 100 degrees. Woo! Ooh, it looks like the 100 is the new 80, eh? Especially with these MacBook Pros. But look at this, look at the frequency. Even though that reached 100 degrees then, the frequency is still high. Still 3,988 um, megahertz. But the GPU frequency has dropped, okay? That's dropped from 1,000 and it went to 888. And now it's just gone back up to um, 966. So... There is some throttling of the GPU there. We can see that it come down from a thousand. It's not a massive throttle, I must say. I was expecting the actual um, the, the uh, CPU to throttle a lot more. It's consistent, like it's solid at that three thousand nine hundred eighty-eight. And the XPS fifteen when you game, that CPU will throttle now. In its defence, you're uh, trying to call a GTX ten fifty Ti, which is much hotter than the 35 watt part that's in this um, MacBook Pro, this uh, RX or whatever it is, um, Radeon Pro uh, 560X. It's um, pretty much nearly double the TDP of this. So it's trying to cool the much uh, hotter graphics card down. But as you can see here, CPU is not throttling at all. I've never seen it once drop below its base speed of um, 2.6, I think it is, 2.6, because this is the 8950H, so it's not the i9. Um, that's pretty good, I'd say, and look at the GPU, it's a 1,000. I'm not experiencing any throttling. Now, 40 frames per second at medium, this is medium preset, that's okay, that's, that's perfectly fine, it's more than playable at this sort of frames per second. I would have to fiddle with the settings and... Um, you know, I'd probably turn off some of the effects and stuff like that, and I'll, I guarantee I'll get up to um, pretty much 60 frames per second 
uh, medium settings with some of the other things like the view distance turned down. I'll, I'll get to that in my gaming review, but I'm pretty confident I'll get to 60 frames per second, but I'm not exhibiting any throttle in here. And yes, maybe it's only allowing us to use a certain amount of cores because 10% seems like a really low CPU usage. I know when I game on it with the Windows machine, it definitely uses more than 10%. So whether Apple, I don't know, somehow lock off some cores or something, I've got no idea. 10% seems really low uh, CPU usage. But as you can see, the frames are good. It's not throttling um, on the CPU and GPU. It did throttle a little bit. The temperatures are high. I didn't expect anything different, but so far it's not throttling. I'll just go through it. I will tell you more in the full gaming review. Does it throttle at all? But this is loading GPU and CPU. I'm actually very surprised because um, I expected 100% for sure that this would throttle gaming. And it's not. It's not throttling. That's... I've got a question mark over the uh, CPU usage, like 11%. It's a bit weird um, to have such low CPU usage. Actually, what I'd want to do is I'll, I'll put up a... Um, I'll change the MSI afterburner to see which cores are actually being used and see if some are actually locked off. I'll do that in my gaming review, but as it stands now, straight out of the box when you use Windows, it is not throttling, so that's all I can tell you. Um, other than that, it's not much I can tell you. Hold on, uh, yeah, change it on auto. That's pretty good, I would say. And this is gaming exactly how it, I would expect this sort of a level of GPU and CPU to game. What an idiot, I just dropped it again. Trying to use a controller does suck. Where are these people? Come on! I want to kill you. That's pretty good. And the fans aren't even flat stick. So, very interesting. Now, of course, the i9 would try and burst higher. Um, or maybe that would throttle. But this is gaming. Macs aren't made for gaming. Uh, it's not much more I can really say. I think I'll wrap it up here. I'm just trying to find someone. Where did everyone go? Don't tell me I'm alone at the ruins. That's a bit strange. Anyway, I'll head towards my teammates. Uh, yep. Hopefully that woke someone up. But the frame rates are constant, uh, the frequency is constant, uh, you know, GPU throttles a little bit. All I can say is it's not really throttling gaming. Um, I'm very surprised. I'm going to check out what's going on with that CPU, why it's only using 10%. Um, I'll wrap it up here. I'll catch you in the next one. Tally ho.